Hi, everybody. Welcome to Exploring Sunday Scriptures for this week. This is coming to you on October the 18th, 2022. It's a brief break from our sermon series of warning lights, particularly using those which might pop up on our dashboard uh, in our cars as a sort of spiritual insight into things that we perhaps need to be mindful of in our faith lives and in the way that we conduct our lives in general and how we can stay connected to God, which can keep us running well and smoothly towards the future that God has in mind for us in our world. This week coming up is Children's Sabbath, and that's why we have this break in the series before our final installment on October 30th. Then we move on to All Saints Sunday and finish off the liturgical year with the final two Sundays following All Saints on the 13th and then on, excuse me, the Reign of Christ Sunday, the last Sunday before we enter the season of Advent. But I still wanted to spend this time and share with you the scriptures for this week so you had some exposure. Now, I will admit at the forefront that this is the first time I am reading these scriptures, and so my exploration of them is not in-depth in the sense of having gone into some study uh, and interpretation of them, but I'll share my reflections and impressions of this passage that will be used for this children's Sabbath. I have two versions of it, just for the sake of giving us a little a little bit different way of hearing the same passage of Scripture, since we are limited to just a single one. The passage is from the second letter of Timothy, so 2 Timothy, this is in the New Testament, uh, in the third chapter, verse 14, through the fourth chapter, verse 5. And I'll begin with the New Revised Standard Version, which is what the Pew Bible here at Christ Church uh, is. And then I have the Message Version. I've been using the Message quite a bit more frequently in, during this past series, particularly when I think that it helps to emphasize or bring out some of the meaning the, of the passage that's there, as well as how that connects into the theme of the day. Um, So that's why I use the message. It's just a little more direct or a little more contemporary, and I think that that can assist us all in our understanding. But let's begin with the New Revised, and then I'll read the message right after it and then give you some of my impressions or initial impressions and thoughts um, on this passage as a way to, to begin our thinking about and pondering this passage so that when we come to worship, we really are ready and have open ears to receive the message that um, will come forth from this. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound teaching, but having their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, be sober in everything, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. And the message of the same passage. Don't let it faze you. Stick with what you learned and believed, sure of the integrity of your teachers, why you took in the sacred scriptures with your mother's milk. There's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task 
tasks God has for us. I can't impress this on you too strongly. God is looking over your shoulder. Christ himself is the judge with the final say on everyone living and dead. He is about to break into the open with his rule. So proclaim the message with intensity. Keep on your watch. Challenge, warn, and urge your people. Don't ever quit. Just keep it simple. You're going to find that there will be times when people have no stomach for solid teaching, but will fill up on spiritual junk food, catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. They'll turn their backs on truth and chase mirages. But you keep your eye on what you're doing. Accept the hard times along with the good. Keep the message alive. Do a thorough job as God's servants. So, my impressions of this passage. Well, let me see. I could begin by saying perhaps its use or inclusion for children's Sabbath has to do with particularly from the New Revised Standard Version that we have uh, in verse 15, knowing from who you learned it and how from childhood you have known sacred writings. So there's a reference, children's Sabbath, to childhood. So maybe going back to that or using that as part of a focus for this particular Sunday in its theme of children's Sabbath. But for me, I think what um, stuck out must, most is comes from the fourth chapter, in the third verse where it reads, this is the New Revised Standard Version, For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound teaching, but having their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. And I think the reason that this stuck out to me is the sense that Abiding by God's words and God's ways is not always, maybe perhaps ever, the popular way. And it would be much easier to satisfy our own inclinations and whims and opinions to simply go off in a direction that would validate that. There are times where God's word challenges us exceptionally in the kind of life that we are supposed to live, how we are supposed to love so freely, including our enemies, including those that we see the least connected to. Uh, and here we are to be very different in the sense that even there, love is to be our defining attribute. So when I hear this little bit about the time is coming when people will not put up with sound teaching. It's not so much trying to read the signs and the times, if you will, that here we are in that kind of thing. I think in some ways it speaks to human nature itself. It's much easier to go with the flow, particularly if that flow is something that we ourselves agree with. And I think that that proves exceptionally hard, very difficult, when our faith kind of rubs against that or rubs against us and challenges that. And yet that's what I feel that coming to worship and hearing God's word and having that word proclaim ultimately does. Um, I remember having professors in homiletics and preaching that said that that encouraged that every preached message should have a call to discipleship and that part of that call to discipleship is that place that makes us all a little bit uncomfortable that we are not doing and living and being all that we can and should be and God loves us and forgives us and picks us up and dusts us off. And you could say that uncomfortableness is then sending us back out and saying, okay, do it again, but this time better. So that's kind of what I get or the impression that I get off of this is that warning to us all that when we feel that everything is aligning perfectly for ourselves and what we believe, we perhaps need to check that against the truth that we may believe it, but it may not be that eternal truth that really should be the foundation of everything for us. Um, if we go back to the beginning of this, we have that essentially promoted. All scriptures inspired by God and useful. 
and it has a multiplicity of use to teach, to uh, reproof, for correction, for training. So for correction, to turn us around, to get us back on the right path, for training, to help us to be able to endure, to grow those strong faith muscles that no matter what we face, we will hold fast to the truth because of that. Um, and, and that little bit concludes with, so that the person of God may be proficient and equipped, equipped, that may be, again, one of the failings of faith is that when we encounter crisis, we are not prepared, that we haven't done this work that we should, that we're not equipped to be able to encounter it, to be able to navigate through it. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. Um, on the other hand, this is what I hear from people of faith all the time, particularly when it comes to personal crisis and in times of loss, is the sense that they cannot imagine what it would be like to endure these moments without faith, and that those without faith, as I know the quote reads somewhere, are most of all to be pitied, that they don't have anything to help them through those times um, they have no equipment. They haven't been equipped to be able to handle them. And so the questions and the pain that come with those moments are not things that they are able to overcome. So here we are again, back at God's word as a place that can give us and equip us all that we need. Not our whims and desires are going with the flow or going along only with those that we seem most of all to nod our heads and agree with but to recognize that God's word is going to make us uncomfortable, that it is there for correction, for training, and for reproof. But that is the truth that, can, that does endure through all seasons and through all things. I know that's just the tiniest bit of introduction to this passage, and I do encourage you to go back to it and review it. Uh, if I've never shared before, a great website to go to is BibleGateway.com. Then you can put in the scripture passage and you can pull up as many different translations of that passage as you, as you would like. That's a great way to begin to study the Bible is to look at different translations of the same passage. And these online resources make that very, very easy to do, BibleGateway.com. So you can go there, you can read the New Revised Standard and the Message Version, the NIV, and any of the other. They have dozens of different translations available there. The other thing that I would encourage you to do, and I know I, I uplift this quite frequently on these, is to consider the context. So in this case, what's the context of everything going on with you and around you right now? And how will that shape your experience of hearing this passage, even hearing it this first time? Is there, are there things, is there something particular uh, that is happening with you that this passage seems to be leaning into uh, or challenging in, in some way? Ponder that. And it can be a really interesting exercise to kind of write down, well, what is all the baggage that I'm bringing with me at this time? What is it that's making my heart heavy or bringing me great joy or what are the challenges that I'm facing this week, the appointments and the things that I know I need to do, and all the things that are also left undone, and um, anything else like that? You know, you can fill up a page really quickly, and then you see how much is actually influencing you as you, as you hear God's Word and come to worship, and you bring all of that with you. And so it does have a great influence on that experience of worship and, and how it is that God's Word communicates to each of our lives uniquely in those unique moments of each of our lives, depending on where we are in our journey, our journey of faith, as well as our chronological journey through life. Thanks, as always, for joining me for Exploring Sunday Scriptures, and I look forward to being with you again soon. See you in worship. <laughs>